there everybody, Jerry here for Android Central and we are taking a look at the Nexus 10. Uh, sweet, sweet tablet. I went into it a little, eh, man, on the idea of going back to 10 inches. I really like my Nexus 7, but I've used it for about a week and I'm starting to fall in love with it. Uh, you see the screen right there, that, that's the killer. And there's just no way I can get you to notice how great this screen is without holding it in your hand. So I'm just gonna let you look at it. I'm gonna count to one, two, three. It's gorgeous. I'm gonna tell you it's gorgeous. You're gonna have to see it yourself to believe it, but there it is. Let me shut it off for a second while we check out the hardware on this thing. Uh, you can see right up there, there's your front facing camera. It's 1.9 megapixels. What it lacks in sharpness and quality, uh, I have noticed it makes up for with fast switching, I guess is a good word for it. It focuses quickly, it adjusts white balance and for lighting quickly, which means it's really good for hangouts and video chats, much more so than taking pictures of yourself to put on Facebook or whatever. So it is what it is. Uh, I guess the improvements for video chatting are, are a good thing. Keep going around here on the front and mind my fingerprints, I can't stop playing with this thing. You probably can't tell too much, but right here on the side, and we come over to this side, it's the same, it's a speaker grill. Now I don't think there's a tiny, you know, narrow, long speaker that runs the whole length of it, but I can't seem to find a spot that blocks the noise. Whatever they've done, it's nice. It's forward-facing speakers. Uh, none of this stuff on the back like you had with the Nexus 7. Uh, I always used to have to cut my hand back there whenever I was playing something to, you know, get better sound out of it. You don't have any problems with this. The speakers are nice and loud. Flip the thing over here, and you can see here on the right side of the tablet, if you were holding it in landscape, uh, hope this is in focus good. There is a HDMI port. No foolishness with H, you know, MHL. Uh, no craziness where you have to buy a dock or anything. There's a port. You plug a cable in, plug it into your TV, plug it into your computer monitor, and it displays. Yes, I've used it. Watched a movie on my television. Works great. Uh, glad to see that's back. Come over here up to the top. And on the right side, you've got nothing. But over here on the left, it's a really odd place. It's so you can see it's really the left. This is the front. You've got your power and your volume switch. Uh, I find it a little weird where they're set. I kind of think I prefer it, you know, off to the sides, but it is what it is. They match the finish very well. You probably can't hardly see them, but they're there, I promise you. And flip her over the whole way, and you've got your micro USB and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, Good news, the micro USB charges and it will charge from your computer. It will charge from just about anywhere. You don't have to have a special monstrous two milliamp hour charger to make it charge. Uh, I leave it shut off in the daytime, plugged into my computer and it charges. So that's good news. And like I said, there's your jack. Come down here to the bottom and this is interesting. You've got the pogo pins and we've seen that from the Nexus 7 and couple other phones and didn't really get used the way we thought they would. You know, there's some cool stuff with the uh, Nexus One that used the dock, but not much of anything else. This also has two magnets to either side. It's a, Google calls it a magnetic connector, so I think we're going to see some sort of accessories that utilize those pogo pins, and that's good news. We're all about the pogo pins. We love them. Flip her around to the very back. And you can see it says Nexus, focus, it says Nexus, it says Samsung, it's black, it's soft finish, it doesn't feel cheap, uh, it doesn't feel quite as nice as this spun aluminum on my transformer, but it does feel pretty nice. I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it's slowly beveled. I say slowly in the, uh, you know, carpenter term, slow, it's a nice, small, you know, no sharp radius of any kind, the whole way around. Feels like a little, a little bit like a, a shallow bowl or a plate. Uh, works well. You know, looks weird at first, but it works really well. 
Got a five megapixel camera and an LED flash back there. And the camera is better than you think it would be. Uh, why somebody would want to use a tablet for a camera, I don't know. But if you do, uh, the pictures don't turn out half bad. You'll be able to see that in the post. And you've got this weird speaker grill thingy. Uh, it pops off. Doesn't pop off easily. And you're afraid you're going to break it, but you won't. It's real flimsy. It's, you know, Samsung is good at that, making these covers that feel like paper. But the cool thing is, underneath, that's where all your gobbledygook is printed. Uh, you notice you don't have FCC IDs and serial numbers and CE marks and all this other nonsense down here. All up there where it stays out of the way. And uh, this is where those smart covers attach. They snap in and these spots are for magnets to hold it in place. And the cover feels more like part of the device. Uh, pretty slick. I like it. Uh, definitely want to try to get one of the smart covers and see how that works. But I especially like the, the thought that, you know, not everybody wants to see all that printing. Uh, just because it's not super expensive doesn't mean it can't look like it is. So all your stuff is hidden up there. And of course, this just snaps back in. But uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. We want to have a look at the tablet. Let's turn it on here. And you can see slide to unlock. Uh, let's go back. Notice the fonts changed. Uh, it's still Roboto, but it's taller or narrower and bolder at the bottom. I just look so different. It was something I wanted to mention. Uh, the screen, we've talked about the screen. It's downright amazing. You will love the screen. Uh, the performance, that's what everybody wants to know. Uh, and I, I made mention of it before and some people have called me on it. Yes, it'll stutter sometimes. Uh, if I'm watching a full 1080p Blu-ray rip and anything going on in the background, the, the video will stutter. The soundtrack will get out of sync. Yeah. But that's, that's we're pushing the daylights out of it. Chrome, if I open Chrome with a bunch of tabs, well here, let's, let's try that. See if we can do that. Oh yeah, all my tabs are still open. Let's let it load and you can see there's Android Central uh, visiting all the smartphone sites and then there's some over here. I look for cool wallpapers to play around on that high res screen. But uh, watch. Yeah, that's just not good. And, you know, I don't know whether we want to blame Chrome. I, I, I can't see it being this hardware. Uh, the hardware underneath this thing, you know, the, the, the CPU, GPU, flat out, it's the best money can buy. Google did not skimp. This is an entire generation ahead of everything else that's out there. Uh, the A6, the, you know, Snapdragon Pro, the the Mali Quad. This is a dual core A15 processor, not kind of A15 or hybrid A15. This is the real deal. This is what they're using for Chromebooks. They're using it for lightweight ARM-based netbooks. This is the monster. It also has the only GPU that'll handle this gigantic high-res screen. Uh, I don't even want to say what number it is because I will sure get it wrong, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 2500 by 1600. It is the same resolution as a Retina MacBook Pro, and it's in a 10 inch tablet. When you're driving that kind of pixels, sometimes it's going to take some CPU power. Other times, like right now, boy, this thing is quick. Open up the app drawer, it's quick. No lag whatsoever unless you are doing something in the background. I, I am very impressed with the, the performance of it. Uh, while we're going through, it's, it's a stock Android device. Jelly Bean 4.2 is very close to 4.1. You've got your standard set of home screens and there is a bunch of widgets you can install. And you can see I've installed some stuff from the market. Heck yeah, I'm going to treat this thing like my own. I'm going to enjoy playing with it until Google says I have to give it back. So you've got, you know, any number of widgets you can put on. You tap one and you drag it in place. And like Jelly Bean, you can, you know, move them around, do whatever you want with them, slap them up there to get rid of them. Uh, the search is persistent. You know, it's Google. They want you to see their name. Uh, not much more to be said about it. Uh, somebody wanted to see Google Music at work. There is Google Music. It is the tablet interface we're used to, even though the home screen with, you know, the status bar and nothing down in the corner 
it's not quite what we expect when we see a tablet. I think Google has changed that and frankly I think it's for the better. Uh, you've got your split notification bar. If you come down here, that's where you've got standard notifications. If any of my friends would send me something right now, you'd see it there. And over here, you've got the quick settings. Uh, it's your, you know, that's me, but on yours, it'll be you. That's your Google Plus profile. Tap it and can go there. And then there's all the, you know, quick access to the settings. Don't want it to rotate anymore. Bang, it won't rotate. Uh, brightness, bring that up. Cool. I mean, it's it's different. Having it in two panes like that is different, but at least it's there, and maybe it's something we'll get used to. I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, it's just, it, it, it's new. It's different, and the screen resolution on this thing will just blow your mind. That's the only way I can put it. It will blow your mind. Uh, a lot of people are asking me, is it better than the, the Nexus 7? Well, no, it's not better than the Nexus 7. It's different from the Nexus 7. I don't even have one here with me to... Yes, I do. Buried over here under the piles of stuff. Here is my Nexus 7 I got from Google I.O. You can see it is a whole different beast. Uh, Performance-wise, 99% of the time, the Nexus 10 is faster, uh, especially in your day-to-day -day stuff through the home screens, opening app drawer. It's blazingly fast. What it doesn't have that the Nexus 7 offers is portability, so that's just something you're going to have to decide for yourself. I can tell you with confidence, if you want a 10-inch Android tablet, if you don't need a dockable solution like Asus offers, and you don't need the Wacom digitizer, this is the one you want to buy. I'll stake my reputation on that. In the meantime, i got to go back to work. I will talk to you guys later. I am out of here. Jerry here from Android Central. If your wife won't let you run around naked, grab a kick-ass t-shirt from shopandroid.com.